my lovelies. So today we'll be talking about the story of the Menendez brothers. It's a true crime ASMR. So Joseph Lyle Menendez was born January 10th, 1968, and Eric Galen Menendez was born November 27th, 1970. And they're both American brothers who were convicted in 1996 for the murdering their parents, Mary and Joseph Jose Menendez. So Jose Menendez was a Hollywood executive. On the night of August 20th, 1989, their parents were sitting on a couch the den of their house in Beverly Hills when Eric and Lyle entered the den carrying shotguns. Their father, Jose, was shot in the back of the head with a, with a 12 gauge Mossberg shotgun. Mary was awakened by the shots and got up from the couch to see what was going on. She was shot in the leg and fell down then was shot again several times in the chest, arm, and face, leaving her unrecognizable. At first, the brothers blamed the mob, but the overkill pointed to a crime viewed by emotion than the mafia. Over a dozen gunshot wounds between the victims, including one to the back of Menendez's head, which decapitated him, and another against Mary. Menendez's against Mary Menendez's left cheek, which blasted her eye and nose. When the brothers returned home that night, Lyle called 911 and shouted, Someone killed my parents. When police officers from the Beverly Hills Police Department arrived, they told them that the murders occurred while they were at a movie theater watching Batman. They then went to the festival, Taste of L.A., at the Santa Monica Civic Auditorium. The police didn't order the brothers to undergo gunshot residue tests then, since they had yet to suspect the brothers' involvement. In the following months after the murders, police started connecting the brothers' lavish spending to the murders of their parents. Eric hired a full-time tennis coach and competed in a series of tournaments in Israel. Lyle bought a Rolex watch, a Porsche Carrara, and Chuck Spring Street Cafe, which is a buffalo wing restaurant in Princeton, New Jersey. They left the family mansion and lived in adjoining condos in nearby Marina Del Rey. They also drove around Los Angeles in their mother's Mercedes-Benz convertible and went on overseas trips to the Caribbean and London and dined expensively. They spent around $700,000 until their arrest. Police tried to think of who would have motive to kill Mariels and Mary and Jose. They investigated potential mob leads, but nothing came from them. Police started to believe the brothers were most likely the killers since they had financial motives and were liberally spending money after the murders. To get a confession from Eric, the police convinced Craig Signorella, Signorelli, one of Eric's close friends from high school and a tennis buddy, to wear a wire while having lunch with him at a restaurant. When Craig had asked Eric if he killed his parents, Eric said no, but he eventually confessed to doing so to a psychologist, Jerome Ozio. Ozio told his mistress, Judalon Smith, she later broke up with Ozio and told the police about the brothers' killings. Lyle was arrested on March 8, 1990, and Eric turned himself in just three days later after returning to Los Angeles from Israel. Both were separated from each other in prison. In August 1990, Judge James Albright said the tapes of the conversations between Eric and Ozio were admissible evidence, even though Ozio said that Lyle threatened him for violating doctor-patient privilege. Albright's ruling was appealed, and the proceedings were delayed for two years. The Supreme Court of California ruled in August 1990 
1992 that most of these tapes were admissible, excepting the tape in which Eric discussed the murders. After the California ruling, an L.A. County grand jury issued indictments in December 1992, charging the brothers with the murders of their parents. They said they killed their parents in fear that their father would kill them after they threatened to expose him for years of emotional and sexual abuse. They were tried separately with one jury for each brother. Both juries were deadlocked, which resulted in a mistrial. For the second trial, they were tried by a single jury, which found them guilty. Thereafter, they were sentenced to life imprisonment without parole. became a national media sensation when Gord TV broadcast the trial in 1993. Leslie Abramson, their lawyer, became known for defending the brothers, particularly Eric. Lyle and Eric reviewed that they were driven to murder by a lifetime of abuse at the hands of their parents, especially sexual abuse at the hands of their father, who they described as a cruel pedophile and perfectionist. Meanwhile, their mother was described as an enabler, mentally unstable, selfish, an alcoholic, and drug addict, who encouraged her mother's husband's abuses and was also violent towards them. The allegations against the couple were supported by their families, who with multiple witnesses testifying. The brother's cousin, Andy Cano, reviewed that as a child, Eric told him about the sexual abuses which they both described as penis massages. Another cousin of theirs is Diane van der Molen, who reviewed that she once told Mary about Jose's molestation on Lyle, although Mary told her that it was false. Physical evidences were included, and these included nude and sexual photographs taken by their father, showing Eric and Lyle's genitalia as kids. Even with all the testimonies and evidences supporting the brothers, the prosecution continued the theory that the murders were done for financial gain. Lyle's prosecutor, Pam Bolzenich, argued that men could not be raped because they lacked the necessary equipment to be raped. Eric's prosecutor, Lester Kariyami, Kariyama, suggested that Eric is gay and that the sexual abuse was actually consensual. A few weeks before the night of the murders, Lyle and Eric alleged the sexual abuse started again, leading to several confrontations in the family about keeping the abuse a secret or else their father would kill them. Therefore, at this point, the brothers found out that their parents were hiding rifles in their bedrooms which led to them buying their own shotguns for protection. The last confrontation was inside the house den on August 20th, 1989. Kitty and Jose would be killed a few minutes later. The brothers then stated that their father closed the den's door at that time, which is unusual. Paranoid and afraid that they would be killed by their own parents, Eric and Lyle went outside to load their short shotguns. Eric stated, As I went into the room, I just started firing. The trial ended with two deadlocked juries. Therefore, the Los Angeles County District Attorney, Gil Garcetti, announced immediately that the brothers would be retried. The second trial was not as public because Judge Stanley Weisberg did not allow cameras in the courtroom. During the second trial, Weisberg also did not allow much defense testimony about the sexual abuse claims and did not allow the jury to vote on manslaughter charges instead of murder charges. Consequently, both brothers were convicted on two counts of first-degree murder and conspiracy.
proceed to commit murder. During the penalty phase of the trial, they were sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. The jury said the abuse defense was not a factor in its deliberations, but decided not to impose a death penalty because both of the brothers had had no criminal record or any history of violence before murdering their parents. But unlike the juries in the previous trials, the jury in the penalty phase had rejected the defense's theory that the brothers killed their parents out of fear, even with all the testimonies and evidences to the contrary, since it was believed that they committed the murders to inherit their father's wealth. During the penalty phase of the trial, Abraham Abramson told a defense witness named William Vickery to edit his own notes, but the district attorney's office decided not to conduct a criminal investigation of Abramson. Both brothers also filed motions for a mistrial. On July 2nd, 1996, Weisberg sentenced the brothers to life in prison without parole and also sentenced them to consecutive sentences for the murders and charges of conspiring to commit murder. So, it had been many years and the Menendez brothers were held in separate prisons until recently, they were reunited in the same prison. In the 22 years they had been in prison, the brothers have continued to attract public attention, including those of their marriages, which had happened behind bars. The Menendez brothers' wives were the following women. The first one, was named Tammy Sacomen Menendez. This was Erica Menendez's wife, and she was first introduced to him after she sent him a letter during his first trial in 1993. The two had continued their correspondence through the suicide of Tammy's first husband later that year. They met in person in 1997 for the very first time and got married in 1998. In 2005, she authored a book about their relationship titled, They Said We'd Never Make It. That year on MSNBC's The Abrams Report, Tammy said that even though she was troubled by Eric's killing of his parents, she felt as if she knew who, she, who he was. She stated, It troubles me, but I do know the person that Eric is, and I know his heart, I know his soul, and I do know what happened that night, and I do understand. Now, Anna Erickson, was wedded to Lyle Menendez. She was a former model. They were married by a speakerphone in 1996. The pair met after she wrote to Lyle during the Menendez brothers' first trial in 1993. They got divorced in 2001 after Lyle started writing and being pen pals with another woman. That other woman is Rebecca Sneed Menendez. After divorcing Erickson for two years, Lyle married 33-year-old magazine editor from Sacramento, Rebecca Sneed. After they had married, she became a lawyer. They were still married, and in 2017, Lyle told ABC News 
that he felt it was possible for him to have a successful marriage. He said, I found I can have a healthy marriage that is complicated and built around conversation and finding creative ways to communicate, sharing without all the props that are normally there in marriage in terms of going out to dinner and having as much intimate time together, and so on, Lyle said in the interview. Well, that was the story of the Menendez brothers. And it was a really interesting case for me to do research on. That's why I hope you, you guys really like it. Leave me a comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Alright. Love ya.